Hi, it's Chris Sanganer and welcome to the Conscious Education Podcast. On this episode, you will get an insider look to the superconscious path, my latest book that I've just released in the last month. This training is part of the book. So if you want to read the book, spoiler alert, I will be covering some of the characters uh, in the book. And, and the reason why I wrote this book is I wanted to bring my work to the next level. So I chose to write a fictional transformational story that has unconscious and super conscious principles embedded into the story. It will recode you just by reading it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this episode. Listen to the end. This is a long one, but a very impactful one. Yeah, thrilled to be here. Really, really thrilled. It's, uh, you know, writing a fiction, transformational fiction story is uh, the highest uh, expression of the creative orientation uh, that, that I've been able to really sit and, and sit down and do. It was, uh, it was incredible. So, so fill me in, everyone. I would love, uh, love to hear thoughts, uh, any shares while we wait for everyone else uh, to come on in. It doesn't matter if you haven't finished the book or not. I mean, we're probably going to give away a lot of what's in there, but that doesn't matter. Uh, unless it matters to you, then you probably shouldn't. I mean, uh, spoiler alert, we're probably going to talk about the book here, um, which, is a, which is a good thing. Hey, <laughs> Craig. Just likes the preface because because he remembers being there and <laughs> couldn't put it down yeah nice look at everyone piling on and 295 people here already how good is that oh well that's that's nice sam <laughs> but it's not a competition really uh thanks gwen read it in one day mary and that's it More than good enough, Chrissy, never enough. Never enough, never enough. Maybe Sarah Lockhart's here. I, did, I was looking out for your name, actually. I didn't, I didn't know you got the book. I'm glad, glad to see you have. Uh, all right, cool. 320 people on now. This is awesome. So uh, that's it, Christy. That's the theme song. Oh, awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks, Landon. Appreciate you. That's amazing. So I thought what we would do today is take some time to go through some of the the lessons in the book and and uh, discuss uh, what uh, you know what what it is that was in the intent of writing Superconscious Path. When I sat down, I wanted to bring the work to its next uh, its next level. And it was really quite uh, a moment when I realized it needed to be a fiction um, book. You know, it was, it's, it's not something I've ever written, I've never written fiction before. Uh, a massive shout out to Kat, my, uh, my editor and writer uh, who helped me and Fiona who helped as well. It was, uh, it was a really big journey. And the intent, uh, and I was looking at it yesterday because I'm just getting ready to start the next book is I was looking at what I sat down and, and my goal was to, was to help everyone understand that they aren't broken, but not that you're not just not broken, that actually the way that you think, uh, you know, you're broken is actually what holds your superpower. Does that make sense? Like I wanted everyone to get like, so, you know, uh, by the way, who's read the uh, first book, by the way, you're not broken, you know, so you're not broken. Great book and uh, really foundational foundation if you haven't got you really should go grab that first book it's uh it it's really good and so i didn't want to just you know recap what was in that i wanted to go to the next level and so if there was a premise of this book it's that it's not that you're not just not broken it's also that the way that you have felt that you are incomplete or lacking actually holds your superpower you know it actually holds your superpower and so you know Every single character in there, whether it's you know Mike or it's uh, it's Vance or it's it's Navi or or it's June, his wife. It, it doesn't matter which one. Is there's a superpower that that you witness? You know, like if you look at June's unwavering loyalty, uh, in spite of a husband who is 
uh, really struggling, but she's just, she's did sit in that sixth orientation, just completely loyal. And you realize, and when you hear her backstory about, uh, you know, her, her upbringing, you realize why, but then also the dysfunction that she's nearly recreating the same, uh, the same man that her husband was. And I don't know about you, but when I wrote that, I felt the sting as I'm writing, I'm like, Oh, that feedback from Vance to Mike, that's got, that's got to, that's got to hurt. You know, it's actually funny in the, in the first iteration when, when Vance shares, you know, Hey mate, like basically, you know, they're driving in the Lamborghini and, and they're out there and, and, and Vance says, Hey mate, like, you know, basically you're, you're the same as her dad. The, the first iteration Mark, uh, Mike responds, fuck you Vance, you know, cause it was just so, so intense. And so <laughs> but my editor says, you should probably take it out. Uh, so that, you know, it can, um, the Amazon won't flag it or whatever. So, you know, that, that was, that was the first premise is, is to really help everybody understand that it's not that you're not just not broken. It's the way that you might feel, you know, that you're incomplete or broken is actually, uh, where your, your genius, your superpower is held. Does that make sense? Like uh, June, June is sixth, the sixth, uh, which um, which Mike realizes when he when he reflects. And so, when you look at every character, I really wanted to to do my best to help everyone understand that you know even the band and Jacks being coming from the fourth orientation, they they all have a dark side of you know, feeling unloved, trying to be loved and rejecting before getting rejected. So in that, that, that moment after the big performance and they go back and, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, Mike sort of says, Hey, no, like I'm married. And, uh, and then Jax runs down, sees the wife and then just attacks was is such a beautiful example of, of the wrong side of that orientation. Then you see the band, where they are on the other side of that orientation, just living their art, right? And, right, like that was really important to me for, for us to, to truly understand that the, the, when we fell from grace and we created our perspective, created our orientation, it, it looks like it was bad or negative, but that's the seed of the superpower. Right. Like that's the seed. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. People go, oh, that makes sense with Jax's behavior. Yeah. So, so Jax is the fourth orientation that, that is always, you know, and, uh, and, you know, the reason why they, they ended up, they split up when they were teenagers was also because she was just trying to test whether or not um, she belongs. And, and that was the first big thing, you know, I really wanted to us to get that to go, you know, all of us are going to have a dysfunctional unconscious strategy, right? We're all going to have a, a dysfunctional strategy, right? I've got a few people asking about what we're going to be covering today. So now there's, there's 360 on, well, that's a nice number that yeah, Tesla 360. So there's 360 people on. So uh, what we're going to do today is first off, we're going to talk about the book. And uh, I'm going to spend some time. Um, you guys are going to be able to raise your hands. We're going to bring some people on who want to um, ask me questions. Uh, I'll ask questions and we'll take um, whatever it is that, that we want to take to do that. So you better ask your questions, share your thoughts. I would absolutely love um, some written testimonials or any thoughts that you want to put in the chat box. My team will grab them and screenshot them and uh, I'll read them later because with 360 of you, I'm probably not going to have time uh, to, to cover too many testimonials. Uh, I'm sure that the book's been a really big impact, but I really want to answer some questions. So, and, and talk about the main concepts in the book. Does that sound good? Then after that, I want to introduce you to the Superconscious Creator course. So we have uh, basically what's in the book is really amazing foundational stuff. Our most advanced course is called Superconscious Creator. A few people here have done it. We are actually uh, launching Superconscious Creator for September. And so it's a really great time to talk about it, to get into that program. If you actually want to spend 90 days getting coaching with us, uh, there's weekly sessions, weekly meditations, uh, and a big three-day event online. So uh, so I will talk about that. And I'm actually going to give all of you 
uh, we're going to go through as much as we can of the, the, the very first session in Superconscious Creator. So I thought I would uh, give you all uh, a big insight into that and we'll go do, uh, we're going to create some choices. We're going to talk about orientational, uh, um, shifting into the creative orientation and going to do some creative visualization and a few other things if we get time. That's the plan. Uh, we'll probably go for about an hour and a half before having a bathroom break, another hour and a half of bathroom break. But I've allowed myself tons of time to just come and celebrate with uh, with all of you. Does that sound like a – give me a yes in the chat box if that sounds like a good plan because – because that's what what we're gonna uh, what we're gonna do. So that's great. I see a few hands are raised. Uh, I'm just wondering if those are uh, on purpose. Let me just have a look. I'm just gonna put the hands down. I can see that there's a few hands up. I'm just gonna pop them down for now, and then I'll know moving forward. Um, but those of you who put your hands up, I think it's Melanie and Sai Silua. Sorry, uh, I've not seen that name before. Uh, if if um, I'll ask you, you can put your hands up again. So, so love you guys. Oh, let me just put that, that hand out. Uh, all right, cool. So that's our plan, right? That's our plan. Now, um, as far as recording, some of you have purchased the recording of this session. Uh, and those of you who want to purchase it who haven't, you can uh, at another time. See, Dick, uh, those of you who are in the inner circle, you'll get the recording, no stress, eh? Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So uh, let's let me pull up my version of the the book and let's um, let's go through it. Hey, let's go through it together because uh, you know what a journey it was to to really create this. Hey, like really um, a beautiful journey and took a took a, a lot of a lot of my my uh, effort and heart and I'm so glad to be sharing it with you guys. You know, I thought about you all a lot. As I was um, as I was writing this, and so let me just uh, jump into the very first. Why is it not? Oh, there we go. The very first chapter. I've gone too far. So the first chapter stuck. You know, uh, for me, uh, in this first chapter, it was to really help us all understand how we are stuck. Uh, in our in our uh, current realities, you know, uh, we we get to hear from Vance, who you know has has such good intentions, doesn't he? He wants to help everybody, but he's he's completely stuck, really, uh, in in this life with this this uh, you know this this clinic that has all sorts of things going wrong. Uh, and it's actually funny. I had um. <laughs> So I had a gym about uh, a fitness studio about five years ago now, and we literally had a sex shop um, behind us. And they literally, they literally, I had to deal with that. There was an animated uh, thing going on, and we would have, um, you know, like Pilates and stuff going, and like literally, you could hear everything this this thing was um, saying. And I remember having to go and deal with that, uh, very similar to what Barnes had to do, being like, look, this, we can't have this. And uh, it was pretty funny. And the um, that's where that that idea actually came from, because I remember being like, the, the landlord would do nothing. He was like, they're allowed to do what they like there. Uh, so, so we get introduced here to just how stuck he is, right? And that's really, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty simple start. Uh, I guess the, uh, the next thing is where he... Um, uh, where he finds his mentor Vance, uh, and and to me, uh, I had a very similar experience uh, learning from a billionaire and just getting taught some very 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 good information. So it was obviously inspired by that. Many of you know my story, uh, which is which is good. Yeah. So really interesting to to see to see him kind of go through this idea now. Uh, in this idea, this first chapter, there's a few things there that I really want to highlight. The first is that he's asked to go all in, right? It, it's to go all in. And that is such an important point, right? Like it's such an important point that he gets offered this $50,000 check, right? 
And how many times in life do we just get offered what seems the easy way out? Oh, I'll just take that. But we know that that's not actually what we want. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, here you go. Here's, here's this handout here. I'll just help you. I'll just do it for you. Um, but, it, but actually, it's like, well, if I just get saved, I don't evolve. And it's a really important thing to take with you from the book is that if, if you are in a situation, the, the situation you're in is created by you and for you to evolve to that next level of you, right? And so you may need to get help sometimes and, and let someone else say, because you, 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 know, you don't have any other option. But if you can have the option, learning to become the person who has solved whatever challenge that is and created a new reality is so important. It is so important. And so that moment, you know, like he shares it all, there's this guy and he writes a check and he says, you can have the check or you can have the, the education. And this level of ordeal is when I see the biggest transformation in other people is that's when there's the most tension. You know, he could have easily resolved the tension and taken the check. But then there's that question that comes later in the book, which is, well, where is the power? True? Like, where is the power? And so a lot of people think, well, why, why can't Vance just give him the check and the education? Right? Like, why, why can't he just have both? Who, who thought that? Like, what, you know, just give him the money and teach him. Why, why not? Why not both? And it's a massive secret. It's it. Is you, you cannot be both. If you're somebody that takes the check, you don't need to apply magic. Does that make sense? If you take the check, you don't need the magic. And if you don't need it, then your unconscious won't go through what won't go through what needs to be done to create it. You see? You have to be all in. Like literally, you cannot. You cannot be somebody that's um, got a backup plan. You, you've got to be all in on it. Like you've, got to, like you've got to let magic work for you because as you, as you move from one reality to another reality, there's this middle moment. I'm just looking for my um, pen for my magic board, which I can't find. I bet it was Alexi's hidden it from me. Hmm. And so when you're in that middle moment, Actually, I felt him over here. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, Lexi, not you. And so here you are in the current reality, and here's your desired reality, right? Right here in the middle, when you stand here in the middle, that's you, by the way. You have 50% of you getting pulled to stay the same and 50% of you to be here. If you're not all in, when you reach the middle, you have, don't have enough need to go and be this. There's so much risk. And so every time a person who's not all in, they just go to here and then they bounce back. They bounce straight back. Does that make sense? And that's why Vance doesn't let him have both. That's why. That's why you must be all in. You, you know, and and if you if you remember in the story when Vance first learns from his grandfather, his grandfather does the same thing. He says, "I'm going to give you the education." And then you're going to be able to, to apply it. It's, and, and then you have, and you, you know, you, you have the information, you know. True. So, so it's very important. I want you to get it. You've got to be all in on this stuff. You, you know, you really do. You've got to be all in on being a creator. You, you, you just cannot be half a creator. So, so, so crucial. And, and the, the other the other part is that 
you do need to be vulnerable and receive new teaching. And there's a reason why I had Mike be uh, in the, the male orientation because the, the male, the masculine aspect in every single one of us uh, prefers to not ask for help and not be vulnerable. And all of us, not just men, the male masculine aspect in all of us. It, and it is necessary to, to get mentorship and to get training and to get education because your current reality is the highest and most uh, useful reality you've been able to create with your current education. Re Does that make sense? Like this is, this is the, the best you've been able to do with your current understanding. And so you have to be all in and, and then you also have to be able to be, be vulnerable. And that was, uh, you know, it really does take courage. And those were the three things that I, that I, I had him write in his notebook at the first that it takes courage, be vulnerable, we've got to be all in. And I, I just want you to sit with that for a second because so many people, you know, they want only the, the good side of being magic. They don't want to have to realize that, okay, I'm actually all in. And I have to completely trust my super conscious and my intuition to make this happen. I have to go for that leap, that jump. And there is no right way to do it. Example, me writing this book. I never know, I've never written a fictional story before. I had no idea. But as I went all in and the tension was there and I was all in, I'm, I'm writing it, I'm doing it. What I did is I was able to pull in information from other people. I read books about creative writing and understood how to do backstories of characters. And, and I found a great editing, you know what I mean? Like, because I was all in on it and I didn't back out and go, I'll just go write nonfiction, which is far easier. Right. And you have to stay in it. I tell you, it's, uh, it's so beautiful when you do, but in that middle, it is so frustrating. It is so frustrating. Loving seeing everything in the chat box. And so that, that's, that was that chapter. Let me just move through to the next uh, chapter, uh, which is coming up in just a second. I think also, uh, you know, the scene at the beach, um, when, that, when they're there at the beach and he's teaching structure, something that I think, uh, I think I took it out of the book, but, for us, just like the water flows down towards the sea, right? And it's, um, it's got gravity either pulling or pushing on it. We don't really know it, but it's got this thing called gravity. And uh, it flows along the path of least resistance. That's the same as us. But what's pushing on us is time. What's pushing on us is time. And we're the water flowing. And so time is always pushing or pulling or whatever time does, right? It's always moving, just like gravity is always there. So we're always going to flow somewhere. And those of us who are able to create a structure that allows us to flow to where we want, just keep on creating new end results and keep on flowing and time just keeps pushing us and we flow to where we want. But those of us that stay focused uh, in, in other things are like the kid on the swing, right? You put energy into it, it seems like it goes somewhere, and then it just comes right back. And you push and you push, and, and it's just, and, and that would look like um, water going down and then up, and then the gravity would push it down, and it just will, it, it ends up at the bottom. You see that? It just, it just, it's always there. And, and, I, and I think we did, you know, obviously that was a bit of a recap from You're Not Broken uh, in, in, in the, when it comes to structures, but I think it was a good, uh, a good way to put it, to understand the, the three structures. So let me move forward through structure. Um, shout out to, to Brett and Chris and everyone on the team who helped with those drawings. So the next chapter, uh, we start talking about how our focus creates our structure. Our focus creates our structure. And, uh, and, and as they're there, they're looking at they're talking about structure, there's that moment where the puppy eats the ice cream. And, 
And it's such an interesting thing. You know, uh, I always look at my, I've got two dogs and I always look at my dogs and I think they don't have any resistance. They just want a treat. They go for the next treat. They want the next, you know what I'm saying? They just want to go for the next one, right? They just want to go for the next treat, the next treat. That's, that's all they want. And they, and that's good, but also without the unconscious there, that might like my beagle didn't have us saying no, my beagle would just eat herself to death, literally. And so it, it gives respect, like it, you know, the, the mother of the dog, there's the toddler, there's the ice cream, you can see the puppy's got it. And the, the mother's like, no, because that's going to end up in like dog diarrhea everywhere. Right. So even though it's it's like, and that's that's this um, you know, so we all appreciate the the dog uh, mum there right the owner right does that make sense like it's it's so real it's so real that's what our unconscious is doing our unconscious is just going hey no that's dangerous that's going to lead to something bad you can't say that that mother's wrong you say you know like wouldn't it be nice that the puppy has that ice cream but only for all of us watching not not for later that night and, and that's the unconscious the unconscious is tying us to the tree and saying no and, but it's doing it out of training. And this is something that those of you who choose to join us in Superconscious Creator, this is something we're gonna talk about a lot, is that the unconscious isn't, uh, it, it isn't this big evil enemy. And I write about that in, uh, in, in the beginning, in the preface, preface. I'm like, you know, uh, in a lot of these books that, that I've read is that the subconscious or unconscious, this, this part of us that lives in fear, is apparently the enemy, you know? But it's not. It's actually the part of us that's there to just keep us alive and protect us, true? And so this is a really, you know, there was, it was such a short part in the book, but for me it was such a, that's such an important little metaphor, is that the, that, that the unconscious is not doing anything wrong. It's not doing anything wrong. It just has uh, an idea of how the future will be, and it's not that. And so it's just tying us to a tree consistently, just tying us to it and saying, this is better. That's all is it. This is better. This is better. This is better. Look, how do I know it's better? We're alive. Anyway, I thought it was good. I was, I was going to uh, expand on that point a lot more. So... This uh, uh, diagram here on, um, what page am I on? Page 56. This is something that you want to you, you wanna be able to draw out and understand. It's, um, it's the most important diagram in all of our work, is that there's just these two forces acting on the current reality. One force to change, one to stay the same. One to repeat how you've always been, one to do different. And, and, and that, that is every single one of us have this, no, no matter it's your spouse or your kids or your colleagues or your staff, they all have this. And, uh, you, you know, we, we see later in the book when Jax is living out her unconscious wound, reject others before she gets rejected. And, and we, we and Vance just lets it be, you know, just goes, yeah, I know there's nothing wrong. That's just what's happening. And it's really important to, uh, to understand this is how he was, right? Is he felt like he was a powerless victim with never enough resources and money, right? And he wanted to change, create a successful business and have enough money and be powerful. But because of this really terrible situation that happened when he was a kid, when his parents were killed, is that he always felt powerless, and so he always was finding ways to be powerless and be saved. Does that make sense? Can I get some feedback who really got that about Mike? Is like, it, it was just his programming, you know? It's just his programming. That's all it is, you know? And so his unconscious was continually finding ways that he was thinking he was about to lose his family, whether it's his mother, uh, sorry, whether it's his grandmother or whether it was June, his wife or his kids, like he was always about to lose everyone and powerless and needing to be saved, you know, whether it was the, uh, 
uh, you know, the, that his clinic wasn't working, his real estate business not working, his grandmother doesn't have that, he doesn't have enough money to help her, he's not spending time, it's like he was, con and you can see, even if he took the check, even if he took the check, all he would have done is reinforce that he's powerless and had to be saved. You see? He would have got the check, paid for his grandmother, but he would have felt like this person. And then guess what? What would have happened in a year's time? He probably would have found a way to recreate this with his, you see that? He would have found a way. Like the check, if he'd taken the money, would have only given him a small amount of relief. Yeah, as Marion just typed in, it will be plugging the leak, basically. It, it, you see that? And that's really important is that a lot of times uh, when we're in our unconscious, it can just, it'll just create short relief. It's the problem orientation, ah, a bit of relief. But the structure's still there. And, and so the flow will still flow to the exact same place. It'll still flow. And who knows how it would have turned out in a year from, a year from then, you know? Uh, I mean, he, he's still, he, he may may have uh, not taken the money from banks and gone and uh, taken uh, got got a bank loan, and then the bank loan means he couldn't pay it off, and he loses his house, and his wife goes, "Well, this isn't the husband I want to be with," and you know, but he was literally trying to create that, or he takes the check and um, pays that off, but still, you know, doesn't have enough money to to sustain it, and it's kind of like lottery winners who get a big, uh, you know, this big windfall, go buy a house, but they can't afford, you know, all the insurances and everything that comes with it, right? Yeah. And so I, I hope that that really lands even more now that I that I say it uh, this time. Yeah. And so we, the, the next chapter is called The Truth, and that is about us being completely OK with our uh, our unconscious's worst case scenario. And so uh, Vance is a little visualization now. And um, we might do this today, but those of you who, who move forward in the creative course, um, it's called the double bubble. And when you do the double bubble, uh, who, who's done double bubble and loves it, right? He does double bubble. He, so double bubble is when you go completely into the negative until you know you won't die from it and that it could happen. You know, because because see, the thing is, is, is with with Mike and his, his grandmother is that. You know, the, the real sickness that she had was old age. You know, that's what the that's what she said. This it was, it was old age and being lonely. Uh, you know, that's really what was going on for her. Is that, is that she was she didn't feel needed. She's just and that was really what's going on. And so everything that he was doing, try, you know, because he was so worried about, uh, you know, saving her he was missing out on any time with her does that make sense everyone like he was missing out on time with her it's like i'm not going to spend time with you to try to save you and get myself stressed so i don't enjoy my time with you uh, to try to get more time with you and so if you actually sit with his dysfunction it, it, he was coming from his heart he just wanted to make sure she had the best care but it was all based in fear, right? It was like complete fear. It's like, I'm going to make sure you have more time that you're not even enjoying and you're not going to enjoy time with me because I'm going to be stressed out trying to make sure you have more time. And it's a, it, it's, a, uh, it's a sickness that I see out there a lot. I'm going to work really hard now so that in the future I have time to enjoy it with you. But... Uh, we're not going to be together or it's not going to be this. Like they miss it. They miss the, what they really want. Like what he really wanted is to be connected with his grandmother and to enjoy time and have good family, right? Is this right? Can I get a yes? Is that what he really wanted? He really wanted family. He's a good man. That's what he really wanted. But what was he doing? Working too hard, getting extra mortgages, all this other rubbish over here. But what he really wanted was family time, right? This is what he really wanted. He wasn't in his truth. He wasn't in his truth. That's really what he wanted. He wanted family time. He wanted to 
be he wanted to be a good grandson and and he, and he and he he was doing everything he could and then he was trying to take on so much more and there's a there's an edge right there's a limit where it's like well you know he needs to he needs to be in his end result and there's only so much he can do you know and i think there's a moment where june's like look you are successful you've got you know a roof over your head you've got two great kids you know you're this or that you you you're good you know this 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 thing with your grandmother it's like it's just way over the top and you know it, it's just it's outside of what you can do but there he is thinking he's not enough and you, you know and going for more and i just want to ask how many of you can relate to that because i can i can relate to that a lot where it's like ah uh, what i actually want is this but i'm doing all of these other things to try to get that Hmm. Yeah, me too. You know, this this book when um when it gets released, you know, properly and, and we have physical copies and things available, I think we're going to be able to give it to a lot of our families, hey, like really, and have them read it and, and they're not even going to know the amount of wisdom that they they're receiving just by reading it. Yeah. Cool. So the next piece in the book is called the magnetic mind. And, uh, and this is where Vance has made some, ch uh, some choices with Mike. And, uh, so he makes the choice of the band and then makes the choice of, you know, having the money for his family. And, and they go to Chow's restaurant, by the way, which I think would just be the coolest restaurant. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, so, so they go there and, this is where, you know, he really starts to see people in their genius, right? Like really starts to see their genius and what they're up to. And uh, like, I, I just love, uh, you know, Susie, uh, who's just, uh, the, in my opinion, just, just, just so creative and just, just creating this amazing thing in the, uh, you know, out of, out of nothing and full of energy. And and uh, and you can see on the other side of that dysfunction that she probably bounced around so many ideas. And then he meets, you know, the the two brothers uh, who who created No Fear Beer, and he, and he and he meets them and he, and he connects with them and goes, wow. And every single one of them, is, you can they have a dysfunction, but they've transformed through Vance's teaching to live the superconscious path. Right, right. The, the 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 to really do that, I think that's important. Is it doesn't actually matter which orientation. Uh, you don't have to try to figure out which orientation. It's that you use it. You use it in uh, it, it to create what you love. You know, it's like you you use it. It doesn't matter. Which, it doesn't matter. You don't know which one am I. It doesn't matter. It's that there's nine of them. We're all a little bit of all of them. But you rise up and you use its genius. You don't get stuck in this this dysfunction of it, right? This this trough, which is really, really, really important. So so yeah, it was a, it's a it's a good meeting. I think at Chow's restaurant, I think it's good, and he and he learns a lot, and he. You know, he kind of gets this, this thing that happens to all of us, which is where you've made a choice. You said, I'm going to write a book or, you know, I'm going to, you know, you, you decide something. And then remarkably, that exact thing shows up. But we deny it. Like someone will say, I mean, Chris, I'm, I'm going to, I need it. I need to get a relationship. I would like to be in a relationship. I've been single for a few years. I've enjoyed it. And I, and I want, I want a new relationship. And then they will literally meet someone or get asked out and they, they're not ready. They haven't gone to the gym. They need to lose some weight. They did, 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 did all these things. And it's like the choice, it just turned up, right? It's right there. And, and, and I, this happens more, this serendipitous moment happens so often when I'm coaching and working with people and they just deny it. They literally say, this is how I want it to be. You know, I, I, I want to, I want to do this. And then bang, he presented with the opportunity be like, ah, oh. and typically 
there's this part of you that wants to resist that change every single time. Does that make sense? So as you make choices, we're going to make choices today, by the way. Uh, we're going to go through, uh, I'll be Vance, you guys get to be Mike. We'll, we'll, we'll go through some choices and I'll, I'll help you to, to write out your choices. And as you make them and, and you, you step into it and you do the creative visualization and you, and you live on the super conscious path, opportunities are going to present themselves. And as they present themselves, you got to take that step, not knowing if the next step will show up. You know, that's like when Vance turns off the lights when he's driving home from the racetrack. You, you, you're just, you, we're just flying through darkness. And when we turn the lights on, we can only see what's in front of us. And so, so as, we, uh, as we make a choice, we say, this is what I want to create. Something will show up and you must take that action, right? You must work forward. You walk forward with that choice. It's like you got to. You just got to. And, and so, you know, he does, he goes and sings songs with his, with his buddies and, you know, and that happens and he, and he ends up getting too carried away. Uh, and, that, and that's interesting because it, it kind of moves him forward a little bit more. Uh, I believe that chapter, he ends up in a fish and chip shop with, with Draymond and meets the fifth orientation. And uh, I really enjoyed writing um, that character, actually, uh, you know, because... I had so when I went to university, I had um, business lecturers who were brilliant, yet they were broke. And after learning about the fifth orientation that always wants to learn more and more and more and more and more, it just makes so much sense. And you 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 know, in his short story, he's only in the book for a very small part, but it's it's just enough to understand that there's one orientation that always thinks it needs to learn more and more and more. But if it just allowed itself to jump in without knowing at all, you know, everything, everything takes, uh, takes place after that. So that was, uh, I enjoyed that. And I'm going to take questions. I see some hands coming up in a Q and a and stuff. So we are going to take questions. I just wanted to experience sharing the book with all of you guys uh, first and going through it, even if you haven't read up to this, part of the book yet that's um so i can see rose and others do the little hand up or come around questions uh in a bit you know a hundred percent so don't worry about that uh so so look he meets Draymond and he goes home and uh obviously he has the fight with june because you know june's kind of you know sitting at home um wondering why has her husband missed picking the kids up twice uh he's clearly intoxicated he was supposed to be you know getting training or, or no, he, she didn't even know about training at this point. All she knows is her husband tried to remortgage the house and then she convinces him to go meet this billionaire. And then the next thing she hears is uh, he's not picked the kids up for the second night in a row. And now he's, he's, you know, drinking with high, his high school buddies and his, his ex-girlfriend. And she reacts as every number six would react every number six is completely loyal into the knot and then boom and she just goes you know and goes and stays with her parents that night right right like that and that's a six a six will back you back you back you back you back you and they but but when they when they don't that's it and uh the thing is is that his unconscious is trying to find ways to lose his family, right? This is what I want you to really get. His unconscious is trying to create this. I mean, for goodness sake, why didn't he message or call his wife and let her know at any point in that time? Why would he forget about his kids, right? It's because his unconscious pattern has to start setting up the next way that he's uh that he's not going to that he's going to lose his family just sit with that for a second it's interesting isn't it because it doesn't make sense right logically hey honey this was a really great idea having a good time or 
uh, oh gosh, I need to be picking up the kids. It's that time. Like, how would you, you don't, you can't forget that. It's not, you know, he's a, he's a respectable, you know, he's a doctor, psychiatrist, you know, like, you know, he's, 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 he's a good guy. And, uh, and so, so she, she has that reaction, which, you know, he's just, you know, blown away by it because from his perspective, he's like, oh, no, it's a complete, uh, it's a complete mismatch of the moment. So if we move forward to the next day, uh, the next day, so he goes home, he doesn't know that, uh, that, that June and the kids have gone, gone, right? He doesn't know. And he doesn't know that she's just got an unconscious agenda and don't take it personally. He doesn't know any of this. All he knows is she said, you know, don't come home tonight or whatever she said. And so he just goes and sneaks into the spare bedroom, thinks I'll talk about it in the morning. So he wakes up, you know, super excited, makes pancakes and, and realizes no one's there. You know, they've all left. And it, it's just, you know, it's like, wow. Okay. And what we have to realize is that he takes it so personally. He takes it so personally. By the end of the story, he stops taking people's unconscious agenda personally. But I'll get to that in a little bit. So, so you move forward and, uh, you know, he goes out and this is where the racetrack comes in. So, you know, Vance picks him up and, uh, and then Vance starts really, uh, you know, explaining to him about how, hey, look, uh, there's an unconscious agenda, there's an unconscious strategy, and he, and he hits him slap in the face it still stings me with, you know, to think about, it. he's like, literally your uh, wife is just creating her father and you. And it's like, Oh my God, really? You know, but it's so obvious and it's like, wow. And he, you know, he kind of hates it. So the next thing is getting out of a spin who liked the racetrack uh, metaphor and story. Cause I, I certainly enjoyed, um, enjoyed writing it. Your favorite part? Yeah, I enjoyed writing it. Oh, spoil it. I, I already, Alison, I've already told you, if you're on and you don't want me to spoil it, you have to get, have to jump off and get the replay because uh, today's my, my time to celebrate with all of you and talk about the book. <laughs> so I might have spoiled a, a bunch of it. The, the key with getting out of a spin and so, so when you're driving, uh, if you're not going fast enough and you get in a spin, when you put your foot down, you're going to spin out even more. So you have to be going fast. And so when he's there with, with Ellie and she's, you know, pressing the button that takes off the traction control and uh, it's, um, you know, it, it's bloody scary, to be honest. You're going that fast and someone is, is taking traction control off it change like it changes the whole dynamic of driving, and however you have to learn to just stay focused on where you're going, and so all of us in life we're going to get in a spin. You are going to get in a spin. Something is going to come and press a button on your life, and you're going to start spinning. It is going to happen. Mastering this process isn't about not getting triggered. It's not. It's about how fast you get back into where you want to go. You are going to get in a spin. It's all right. We, it, it, the, but if you get in a spin and then you start looking at the wall, you're going to crash. Looking at the wall doesn't help. You've got to look where you're going to go. And so, you know, he, he learns uh, in that to just regain it, you know, and, he's, and he, he starts out like most of us is we're scared of the spin. So we go slow. The problem is if you go slow and you hit a spin, when you try to drive out of it, all you do is increase the spin. I see this literally in people's lives. They're being tentative in life, right? They're just staying in their safe, comfortable job. Really, they want to do something else. They're being safe. Then something bad happens and they go, oh, no, I need to throw everything at this. But that's too late. They're already spinning. And all they do is they're not ready to take it on. Does that make sense? Like, that's what I'm trying to get across with that story is like, you got to be going in life because then when something hits you, oh yeah, no problem. You just drive out of it. If you're not in your creative orientation, if you're not going for it, as soon as something bad happens and you try to get out of it, you literally, you, you just, of course, like people in their health, right? 
They're not taking care of their body, not take care of their body. They know they're not taking care of it, right? Like they, they know it. They're not meditating. They're not stretching. They're not eating right. They're not moving their body. They're not enjoying They're not using it. Some diagnosis happens and they go, crap, I need to go completely vegan and alkaline and this and this and this and this. They throw everything at it. And then their body has a healing experience because now they've got all this good stuff. Their body starts healing and they just go, whoa. Right? Like literally, I see it in people's money all the time. They're not worried. And then, and then some one bad thing happens. Shit, now I've got to try to make all this money and they have to invest and they just, they spin out. And that's what I wanted you to get from the story is he's going around, he's being so tentative. And then, you know, this, this, uh, you know, this, this coach of his, Ali, she's like thousand bucks and he's like, all right, fine, takes the money and, and just, and just goes for it and, uh, and absolutely crushes it and just releases that part of him that he was denying by playing it safe. You know, denying that part of him that just wants to be that wild, wild, you know, for you out there, that part of you that wants to be that wild woman or that wild man and just go for it. And, and, and he was suppressing that part of it. And then he's just pissed off. He's upset. He thinks, screw it. Like in his little, um, you know, joke, he's like, at least the insurance, if I die, the insurance will help my family. You know, but he's really in that moment of just let's go. Let's fucking go. And he, he wins everything, but he's just he's just so not used to being, you know, that absolutely outcome orientated maniac on a mission that he is inside. He's been so long denying that part of him. right? Just denying that part, going, I'm going to drive around this racetrack safe, you know? Oh, poor me, you know, some, some shop next to me is making too much noise, I can't make money. You know? Like, let's go. And, and uh, you know, we, we'll shift into talking about the Superconscious Creator course, but Superconscious Creator is for those of you who are ready just to rip off that old unconscious agenda and just bloody go for it. Write down some choices and go all in and, and know that, that you are so much more than you've been allowing the world to see because you've been driving it slow. You're going to go in a freaking spin. You will go in a spin, 100%. Spin is going to happen. Get over it. It's how you get out of it. Spin's going to happen. You're going to be flying and a pandemic's going to come at you. You're going to be going and someone's going to say, I want a divorce, I love you, or you've got this diagnosis. That's going to bloody happen, and it's how you come out of it that matters, and that's the... The key to that story is, is, you know, don't sit there waiting for the spin. I wonder when she's going to press it. Go for it. Know that she's going to bloody press it. Expect the world to throw something at you that, that, doesn't, that doesn't help you at all, that spins you out. Expect that to come in and then have to look at it and go, I better not focus on where I, focus on where I don't want to go. Focus on what you want and double down on it foot down. Foot down, double down. When the spin starts, it is not time to ease off on the gas. It's time to go for what you want even more. It's the only option. You're going to get in a spin. You are. You need to have that coach sitting right next to you, just like he did, uh, who's, who's literally helping you get out of that spin. <laughs> And she, she was an awesome character, I think. Wasn't in the book for long, <laughs> but a good character. Yeah. Yeah. And so we move forward and he, and he leaves the racetrack. And uh, it's funny because, you know, obviously at, at this point, you know, he's, he's a champion. He's, he's gone and got an extra $1,000, uh, which, is, which is really, really awesome. And uh, and he takes his way. He he he's taken his way to 
uh, to what he thinks he's going to go home. But this is when the story really ramps up, isn't it? You know, it's about following uh, superconscious guidance. So they're on their way, uh, you know, basically home and uh, they decide to get some food. So they stop in at Vance's uh, golf course uh, to get some food. And, and instantly he's triggered, right? He gets instantly triggered because his unconscious agenda is this where he's he's not worthy, right? He's not worthy. He's not worthy. So he walks in and he's like, oh, I'm here with the owner is basically what he says. And the receptionist is like, I haven't seen the owner. She's telling the truth, but he experiences, Mike experiences it is that he's doesn't, he does, he's not, doesn't belong here. Not knowing that Vance just went to the bathroom and the receptionist didn't see. Does that make sense? And we do this all the time. We create mad, massive assumptions. Anyway, uh, they, they go in, they, they have the, the, uh, the dinner. And what I like about this is, and, and I want everyone to really capture this little nugget that I put in this part of the story, is that at this restaurant, He's sitting down to have food and he is surrounded by everything that he needs to, to solve or solve his problem slash create, create his life. Think about this, right? He's sitting with the, the big, big billionaire of the town in his golf course. He's the man, right? He walks in there with the owner and he's in the most premier place right here's someone who needs to make a bit of extra money have his business work sell some real estate uh and get a landlord to you know talk to the other tenants right does that make sense around like he's sitting in this room but what's he doing he's going oh i don't belong i'm wearing the wrong clothes because they were at the racetrack and he got covered in champagne and he's you know his hair's messy right that's how, that's most of us most of us are sitting uh, in circles, in cities, in environments, on social media. Uh, most of us are, are one conversation away to the right person to help us achieve what we want to achieve. But we don't think we belong. We don't think we can. And he's literally doing it. He's sitting there going, wow. And he's about to let the whole opportunity go. He's in a total spin. And so he sits there, he does the uh, process. We'll do it today. He's in, he's in there, right? He does the process. He closes his eyes, tunes into his end result. And, uh, and he gets the instant answer. He says, hey, hey, Vance, can you introduce me to some people here uh, who might be able to help me with the things that, that I'm trying to uh, do? Does that make sense? Like, it's literally like, oh, hey, can you help? And, and Vance like, I'd love to help. And so... What they do is they do something, write this down. He features the floor, right? The floor is that everyone else is dressed in fine dining, you know, beautiful clothes, and there they are just off the racetrack. Instead of like hiding that fact, he says, hey, we just won. He just won the amateur bloody uh, time at the racetrack. This guy's a legend. He's like a business owner. He's a psychiatrist, and he just he's a champion race car driver, right? Right. And so he just says it as it is. And everyone's like, wow, that's really cool. Of course, that's why you're dressed the way you are. And instantly it transforms. And this is so interesting is that most of us are trying to hide uh, what, what we think is wrong rather than just saying, and it says, oh, you know, I feel nervous here or I don't know this or give me some. We're so unwilling to realize that there's so much value in it. I have a lot of people that come to me, they go, Chris, I want to be a coach like you, but, you know, uh, look, you know, I'm not like you and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm probably double your age and da, da, da. And I'm like, I, ca I can't be like you. I'm like, don't be like me. It, why don't just say, you know, share that you've got a lot of wisdom, <laughs> you know, you've been on the planet for 60, 70 years. Use that and brand yourself around that wisdom that, you know, you've seen a lot, you know, a lot and you should be a really good coach. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it's like, there's a whole, there's a whole thing there for you, you know? And uh, it's uh, it was a really good moment, you know. And he realizes that he gets he gets all that information, then he's able to take himself to go, uh, you know, down to uh, to to follow through on um, on on his performance. And and that was uh, really 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 cool, you know. He he makes his way. He still hasn't heard from his wife, who's uh, 
Um, oh, I think at this point his wife says, uh, you know, sounds fun or something like that. And and anyway, so he goes and and this is where the story allows it allows him to again nearly fall into into the wrong patterns. But but do you see at this point of the story? He's starting to understand the spin and unconscious agenda. He's starting to become self-aware. You know, I see this when I work with people. There's a point where they've, they've been in the spin enough and they've come out of it. They start to become self-aware and start to do things. And they start to uh, unconsciously catch themselves, refocus and coach himself in the moment, right? So so he goes there and, and, he, and he, again, you know, he's in, in uh, uh, Vance's uh um, you know, building and he, and he goes, he goes there and he gets changed and these sort of things. And, and he, he goes and, and finds the, uh, the band and, uh, they're all there and he's, you know, he feels completely out of place because he's been a doctor for 20 years and that's still punk rockers from the, the early eighties or whatever. Right. And, uh, and so, so he goes there and he's like, oh crap, he has to get fully dressed. And it's all a bit of a laugh, but he, but he, but there were so many times where he could have just said, I don't belong uh, and I won't do this. And he goes, no, oh, no, and he, and he, you know, I whenever when I was writing it, I just, I don't know about you guys, but when I was writing, I was imagining, you know, um, the Ramones and you know the the big hair and you know, and then it's sort of like, uh, and it doesn't really fit punk rock, but I was kind of thinking like, you know, like the Kiss um, face paint, you know. I don't know if you thought when you read it, that's what that's what came to you, but that, you know, I was sort of like imagining these uh, these old punk rockers who sort of, uh, you know, just they never really got massively famous, but they just live it, you know, they're just in it. And that they, they had continually been living it while he had gone off and become a serious adult and they were sort of still doing it, you know? <laughs> so I enjoyed, I really enjoyed writing that. So, so, you know, and what, what becomes really interesting is, is that uh, he never really wanted to leave that, that band. He just thought it was either or. And so secretly, he'd been buying all of their albums and and been playing them all, you know. And many of us give up on our, you know, our, our dream. And we think, well, I can only be this now. I'm, I can only be a mom now. Or I can only be a dad now. Or I can only be an accountant now. I'm only this now. I can't be that too. And, uh, and that's kind of what was going on for him. And the band went through so many other bass guitarists and never really found anyone that was quite like him. So, you know, it was like, it was really his spot and he knew it and they knew it, but because, you know, he didn't feel worthy and he felt rejected, he sort of let it go, you know, and he let go of his passion. And, and one of the things that I think in life is you need three passions, one you love, one that makes money and one that keeps you fit. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really good. You know, those are some, um, some really, 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 really good, good passions to have. And so, so anyway, he, he does that. Hey, and, and I think this is, this is really cool is you know, he says, well, I know all the songs and, and, he, and he goes and he, they go to the concert. Now, right before they're at the concert, he has this moment of, I could just, there's, you know, anyone else could do this. Like, the, you know, do you see that there, right before he goes out on stage, there's a moment where he realizes there were, there were uh, there's other bass guitarists and everyone knows these guys' songs, right? And so he just thinks, you know what? They could probably just quit. And then he realizes, who would he be if he quits? You know, like, yeah, you can quit. We can all quit whenever we want, but who, who will I be then? You know, at least if I give it a go, I'm somebody that gave it a go. And, uh, and so he realized he starts catching himself. He doesn't go into a spin and he goes out there and he, you know, he crushes it or whatever, uh, which is, which is brilliant. And he, and he crushes it. And, and then obviously uh, the, the next, the next uh, piece happens. He, he ends up um, back in the hotel room and, uh, you know, Jax gets the wrong impression. And another spin happens really quickly. So I think this is, this is probably the crux of him breaking his old pattern. And what I notice for most people is as they start to break the pattern and break the pattern and break the pattern, there's this moment you know, where it's darkest right before the dawn. Darkest right before the dawn, right here. The unconscious is trying its best to find a way to be broke and losing the family. You see? 
right? Why did he say, I've always loved you? Right? Why, why would he say that? Like, what, what, what's he doing? He's, he doesn't, he's, you know, it's not him. But his unconscious, and, and this is called a takeover, and our unconscious can take us over and we're not us anymore. It takes us over. It wasn't, that's not him. You know, he's doing all of this for his family and, he, you know, it's not who he is. And it, and it takes over. And it's not him. And he, and he tries to rationalize it, doesn't it? He says, oh, I was just caught in the moment, blah, blah, all this stuff. And so often, you know, we can really judge that. We can say, look, you're a bad person. Instead of realizing we just got caught in our unconscious and it's, it was like there was a massive takeover and that was horrible. And it was right at the end. And this is what I want everyone to get from that, is that your unconscious does not want to die. It doesn't want to let go of the way it's always been. So it's let go of its fear of following through on on uh, at the racetrack and and then meeting meeting the right people to help. And now it's even gone out there and is on stage and is kind of like this amazing musician in front. Like it's, it's done all of that, but it's still got an agenda that it's safe to lose your family and need to be saved. And so the unconscious completely comes in and takes over the main personality. The main personality, psychiatrist, heart-centered, husband, loves his wife, doing everything, working hard, blah, 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 all those things, right? Unconscious, little child, lost family, really devastated, horrible experience, needing to be saved. Everything's happening right here. Boom, takeover. Jax, I've always loved you. I'm sure... Uh, you know, in the moment, and Mike would have been like, what am I, like, what am I saying? Like, that, no, no, and th then he snaps right back out of it. Right, he snaps right out of it. And I want you to get this, is that you're going to have a moment where you're about to step right back into creating uh, the old pattern in a new way. And we're all going to do this. As you shift to your new you, you're going to have these moments and something's going to snap and it's about to take you the wrong way. I guarantee it. You're going to be able, about to kiss away uh, your dreams. And that's what will happen. And luckily, his truth was right there and he went, what am I doing? No, I'm sorry. Like, this is it. I'm sorry. I like, and, he, 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 and you need to be able to do that too. Because your unconscious wants to keep everything the same, it doesn't want to change. And so, just as you're about to change, is when it's going to, to really want to, want to come in. So, so he races downstairs uh, following Jax, who obviously then falls right into her unconscious agenda. She just got rejected. And so she feels like, well, I just got rejected, right? So she, and then she runs into June and is like, gets a takeover as well and starts lying and, uh, and just causes all sorts. Luckily, uh, you know, Mike chased her down and, you know, um, starts explaining his way out of it, but uh, I'm sure his wife was uh, right on the edge of like, you know, the, what the heck? And and so there's this whole this whole big moment um, in the in the book, and it really, you know, I really hope you guys got got that. Is that it's 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 so important to just stay focused on what you want, and it's just so important. So he. He, you know, he gets into the, the elevator and he starts focusing on how he wants it to be. And that's the key. When you're in your biggest spin, you just got to stay focused. He could have tried to, you know, make up things, could have blamed Jack, could have whatever. But he closes his eyes, he goes into his end result and he realizes 
that he just hasn't let his wife in. He hasn't taught taught her. Well, she obviously yells at him too. But but you see that, and he starts he starts sharing it. And he goes, here's everything, and I've learned this, and you know. And then there's the the <laughs> there's the moment when he when he proudly gets the check. Oh my god, I laugh so much writing that into the story. <laughs> We're saved. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's funny. So I want everyone to really get that. that I mean, that whole piece from the from the racetrack right through uh, to to after after the the after the jacks situation it's it's about us noticing the spin noticing the agenda rising up and out of it and refocusing right and refocusing and going okay that's there and then refocusing and then refocusing and then refocusing on what we want and refocusing and refocusing okay that's how it's going to be and then what happens is that your unconscious follows that direction. And so by refocusing, it follows it, which is really, really, really um, important. So, so, that, so obviously at, at this point, he's really come through a lot. And this is why you must be all in. See, at any moment, he didn't have to go do the band or the this or the this or the this or this because he'd got, taken the money, he was gone. Do you see now? Can I just get some feedback? Those, you know, let me know. It's 371 of you here now, by the way. Does everyone get that now? You've got to be all in on this because at any moment, he wouldn't need to get introduced. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't become the mic that he becomes if he wasn't all in. If he wasn't just going for it, you know, just going for it. And and, and that's that's so important. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have grown. To the to the mic that we get at the end of the story that can handle all these things and, and you know then sits down and writes out all the superpowers and writes out his his um, his thirteen principles which um, which I won't go through individually I want to get to some questions but he writes down all the principles and then he writes down all the orientations and then he takes his thousand dollars. Uh, from from what he had um, won at the racetrack, and he, you know, he goes and spends time um, with his with his wife, even though you know he's unsure about what's happening in the in the newspaper with you know with Navi and, and everything else. And so, you know, this is this is the most important thing is that he now starts living, so that the shift has happened. He starts living in his end result. He goes, you know what? is uh, I've had this email. Gosh, it doesn't feel like it's going to be good. My end result says I should send her an email. She turns up ready to do a piece, right? And he says, I'm just going to stay in the end result. And she's there just, just at him, stays in his end result. He stays in that end result. The interview is like she's coming at him. And all of a sudden he says, yes, I teach this stuff. And, and I've had this happen to me many times, by the way, uh, where I'm just in my end result and I'm channeling as I'm talking and an idea just presents itself and I just go with it. And so, so he goes with that idea and he's, and he's there, but he has to face real hard truths, right? Like he, he does his choices and he gets the instruction that, that Nana shouldn't, shouldn't, should just live with him. And he rings Vance, right? And he says, Vance, you know, uh yeah gosh like i'm getting this and vance just replies with a text message he says where's the power where are you putting the power how could nana live with me but oh, where is the power so he just gives it up he's he listens to his super conscious and i don't know about you but when you heard that we're just going to give up on nana having the best care and getting the right medication it's like oh really no really it doesn't make sense but but that's the instruction he was getting. And so, so he stays in that end result and he, and he goes for it and he, and he realizes it and he, he puts on the talks and he goes and has a hard conversation with, with his Nana, which actually turns out to be quite fine. Actually, Nana would prefer just to be living with family than having the better medication. She was just caught in Mike's, you know, you got to have the best medication. She actually, who got that, by the way, the Nana was actually 
she just wanted to be with the family. She would prefer to have uh, be with the family and and have purpose and have life than than to be in this special care, you know, uh, and not not doing so. So that was really interesting. Is that he was projecting what he wanted, what he thought was good. Then he has a conversation with Jax, and what he does with Jax, I think, is really important. I want you all to get it. Is he rings up, but he doesn't make her unconscious agenda wrong. See. Every person has an unconscious agenda. They do. We do. I do. You do. We have an agenda. We have a strategy. And we can see someone as their super conscious self or their unconscious self. We can see him in either one. And the, the key is, is that he, he chooses to see her as super conscious and not beat her up for being uh, for having an unconscious agenda and, and everything. he doesn't he doesn't go there everyone he knows she knows everyone knows it was not the best um, version of her but you see people as they are see people as they're going to be see people as you want to react relate to them he doesn't make an excuse uh he doesn't he doesn't say it's okay he just says oh i guess it was the alcohol let's stay focused on this i would like to reconnect with the band you see that if if he had made a big deal out of it uh, he could kiss goodbye, um, rekindling the friendship with his band. Does that make sense? It's like he just had to, he had to not, if, if he'd done that, he wouldn't have got what he wanted. So he had to let that go, realizing this, want everyone to get this, is everyone has an unconscious agenda. Your kids, your spouse, your coworkers, your staff, your mates, everyone has this, they have it. And uh, you can either get annoyed or you can realize there's, there's a genius side of it. And I just need to focus on the genius side of it because that's what will come through. So he does. And he focuses on their genius and, you know, they're going to catch up later. And, and Nana moves in and, and he goes and starts creating the money and he makes the money. And, uh, and then it's not needed because Nana's uh, sickness was a manifestation of having no purpose nothing to look after and uh, i don't know i think that was a pretty brilliant ending to the story now, her, her manifestation was that she 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 needed something to care for and so when she didn't have uh the grandfather pop uh she had nothing to care for and so she, no kids to care for no nothing to care so she needed to become the thing that she needed to care for so she she manifested as soon as uh, she was moved home and she was able to, you know, do the do the laundry. And I, and I just could I could just see her. She's there and she's just so happy just being with her family and hanging out the laundry and cooking a couple nights a week and playing cards with the kids. And, you know, just just being a great grandmother. And uh, she's, she's just there. And uh, and so the, therefore and then then he goes and makes all the money He's like, yeah, I've got the money. And she's like, you know. I don't, I don't have that sickness anymore. And I, and that's, that's the magic. That's the magic. He just held the tension and that's the magic, but you know, it doesn't say that that that's always going to happen. Uh, that's just what happened in this um, fictional story. But I think even if Nana hadn't recovered, she was happier being, being there anyway. And that's it. <laughs> Let me get some questions uh, coming coming through. Uh, so 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 appreciate you guys listening. So I've got Sam and Allison with their hands up. Um, do you want to come out? I think I'll just press the allow to talk button. I think will be the easiest we can hear from from you guys. Hey Sam, how are you, sir? Awesome, man. That was great work. Um, I got, I got a question. So I, I've been involved with books before, and sometimes there's the option of buying in bulk from you, the publisher or your publisher, and then creating a forward or a testimonial inside there from us. Is that something you're considering? Because this is foundational work that I think every future client should read, mandatory. Thanks, Sam. Well, we, uh, we're really thrilled uh, that anyone who wants to become an affiliate of the book can, can sell the book. And so it'll be added to um, the, the, the Online Sales Institute program. 
Uh, but that's a, a new idea that I have. This is my first time hearing about that idea. So uh, do me a favor and send me an email about or something. Show me a book that's like that. I've never heard of it. Um, what What is good is um, I'll, I'm publishing the book under my publishing label so I can do whatever I want. I noticed that. And I would gladly send you that email. However, Thanks. actually, Chris, I don't have an email for you. Oh, cool. Uh, just just hit reply to the support email and it will get through to me. Okay. Yeah. No, no. And I would love to look at it. I've just never, yeah, I've never come across that. Awesome. Uh, Can I ask one secondary question? Yeah. I, I get the fact that these core wounds are born out of a wound that we created from childhood. However, we're wounded in more than one way. Is it possible to have these wounds be situational? You have a wound towards a relationship. You have a wound towards your employment situation. And so it's not always the same wound that pops up. The, that's a really great question. It, it seems to me that most people um, live in three different orientations. Uh, and what's more important is asking yourself, am I putting my power in the end result or am I putting my power in the spin? And when you do that enough, you become self-aware of how you are um, creating dysfunction. Cool. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. No, really great question. Thanks. Sam. Nice to hear your voice again, sir. Can't wait to see you again. Yep. Let me put uh, Sam back. Yeah, so really good point. And many people will have sent in and asked about, you know, which, um, you know, which, which one am I? And the, the main thing to understand is it's actually not necessary to try to know which one you are. What's most necessary is knowing I'm, where am I putting the power? Am I putting the power in in in, in a, a way that I'm trying to solve something about myself or just in my end result? Yeah. Very good. Very good. So I'll, answer, I'll ask if, do a few more questions and then we're gonna have a short break and then shift into some uh, some some additional stuff that's not just the book. Uh, here we go. So we'll hear from Christy. Here she is. Hey, Christy, you bloody legend. G'day, champion. How you going? Hey, mate. <laughs> Doing um, good. My question relates to page 204 during the interview with Navi. Yep. Uh, at the beginning, excuse my background noise. Hang on a sec. That's all right. Let me just move to 204. <laughs> Three year old having a meltdown. How funny. It's okay. Um, so the, the question is so you said that what we are in has been created by us for us. So why does Mike say to Navi, I assume your inaction is causing others pain? Haven't the others caused that pain for themselves? Let me pop you back on mute. Uh, yep, you already did it. And so 204. So Mike is uh, talking with the interviewer, interviewer Navi, and um, he, he has a comment that says, uh, where is it? Uh, so, so just so everyone knows, so, so Navi's all saying, hey, I really want to, uh, you know, uh, create this, this movement, this charity uh, around domestic violence, things like that. And then Mike's like, oh, okay, cool. So since you haven't done that, um, there are people who are hurting because of your inaction, right? There has to be. If it's needed and you're not doing it, then your, in your inaction is causing... Uh, pain and it's a it's Mike really giving her a really big sting a really big like you know bang because 
the one thing that a person who wants to create uh, a movement around domestic violence is that their unconscious agenda is to remove pain in the world. And so he's he's not doing it out of coaching. He's doing it more out of a prod. Like, well, actually, uh, you're actually uh, um, you're actually causing this to still be there because of your inaction. So I'd call that it's more of a, a call out or a motivating point. Thanks, Christy. I think Christy's dealing dealing with a spin. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, he just is. <laughs> There's no why, he just is. Um, cool, thanks, Christy, you legend. Um, Margot? Hey. It says you're unmuted, Margot, but we can't hear you. Oh, Margot, we can't hear you. I might have to get you to type in your question. I'm sorry. It says that you're unmuted, so it's not that. Hmm. All right, I'll have to put um, I'll have to put you on. Uh, I'm going to press mute again, Margot, and put you um, put you back. If you would type your question in, I will um, I will read it out. Are there any other questions that people just want typed in? I think I saw one um, come through. Can you just if you do, just write the word question in front of it. Hey, Arthur, how are you? Oh, real good. Can you hear me? We can, sir. Okay. Yeah, my question is, I love the book. I really do. I'm still digesting it. <clears throat> my question is, now I only teleported my body only one time in 2002 in front of witnesses. It's exactly like Star Trek, but you actually, there's a way to do it without a machine, just through your heart center and through your mind. So my question is, how can I use my unconscious mind and the superconscious mind so I can repeat that and save all that time on, on normal travel. Wow. If, if you find out the answer, uh, I think um, that would be incredible because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, really, it really happened to me once. I felt my body vanish and then reappear at the other location in front of witnesses. Amazing. Well, when you figure it out again, um, sell me a ticket to your course. I'll be front row seat. Okay. Yeah. So I, sorry, I can't. I can't help. I don't know. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Arthur. <laughs> um, all right. Thanks, Arthur. You legend. All right. So I saw some questions come in. Do I have a team member here? Is this? Do I have Liz or someone? Can you help me with questions um, that are coming in typed? Could you put them? Um, yeah, I'm going to answer them. If, um, if you could just put them in a row for me, Liz, that'd be great. Um, so this came in from Alice. Uh, if the most important thing is to focus on the end result, then what's the use of unpacking the resistance, letting them go? Because the resistance is stopping you focusing on the end result. So resistance uh, means to stand against, and to stand against uh, means that there's a block, and so you're, you're unable to stay focused on it. So what we notice is as we focus on the end result, there's resistance, and then as we let that go, we can then refocus. Yeah. So that's why. Good question. Um, now, I did see Margot, she put her question in. Um, Liz, I'm going to just let you type them back into me in, in an order, if that's good. We'll do a few more questions, and then I want to have a little break, and then I want to um, switch um, gears into... Yeah, I'll just take Joshua's question because it just popped up. 
Um, Joshua said, can you talk about structure and really what structure uh, we want to spend most of our time in to manifest? Yeah. So you want to stay in the creative structure. So the creative structure, and I'm going to talk about actually, Joshua, make sure you stay today. That's what I'm going to be covering for the uh, the workshop that I'm going to do uh, after this, after, after this. So yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Um, Linda, uh, question, please advise most powerful Rico to win over the resistant parts of our subconscious. Uh, yeah, good question. There is none. There isn't one. Uh, as, as you're creating uh, and as you move forward, you consistently met with parts of you that, uh, that resist what it is you're creating next and you need to let them go. It's just a process. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Liz, did you have any of those questions? Oh, there we go. Would it be possible to expand on the course covering re-identifying the patterns of unconscious behavior? Will it be going into the detail to the level of Robert Fritz advanced work? Well, you know, Robert Fritz is amazing. And so I'm not gonna uh, compare ours to, to his. Uh, we I've obviously done a ton of his courses a very long time ago. Really enjoy, really respect everything uh, that that he's done, and so he's amazing. Uh, our work is the the most advanced conscious creation work that I've come across, in my opinion. And we're going to go very deep on more principles than just um, than just that. So I'll be covering more of that today. Yeah, uh, Erica says, when I'm in a spin, can I get reminders to focus on your end goal? Yeah, you, your emotions will let you know you're in a spin. Yeah, your emotions let you know. 100%. 100%. Uh, what would Vance do? <laughs> Merch slash swag. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, Marie, how do you create your desired reality? Uh, I know I want peace, love, comfort, happiness. Um, not physical. We're going to be covering that today, Marie, about creations. Yeah, Kari, I'm new to this work. I've lost my sense of purpose. You know, so purpose, it's, it's, uh, it's an elusive thing. I mean, our purpose is to be us. It, our purpose is to be uh, all that we're meant to be. And strangely, you know, uh, a seed knows its purpose is to become the tree, yet the human has to decide what it's going to become. And so I'll, I'll talk a bit more about it today, but, but most people's purpose is about creating uh, you know the best life possible for themselves and then doing things for others that seems to be you know if they can give joy or happiness or solve a problem for someone else like if they can do that yeah it seems to seems to be very purposeful all right so lots of good questions have come in uh look we've been here about an hour and a half and i said we'll have a quick break every hour and a half so here's a quick game plan uh, i'm gonna have a five minute break right now Okay, we have a five minute break. I'll still have time for more questions later. And uh, those of you, did you guys get the notes sent out to you? So I sent out some notes to you. And we're going to shift gears and we're actually going to get into the uh, into some work uh, around the, the Superconscious Creator course. Okay, and this is, as I have shared with you, a remarkable course. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the focus of the course and how to really apply what's in the book. Does that sound good? Like how to really apply it and uh, and what we do in the in the 90 days. Now, if you didn't get any notes, my team will drop a quick link. You can see there, CEC Liz, who just typed in there. That's a link to the notes. And if you don't have the notes, we have emailed them to you. So you can still go through the training now and um, you can grab them out of your uh, no, uh, out of your email later. Does that sound good? Um, thanks, Jeanette. I see I've got eight questions unanswered. 
Uh, and so I see those are all sitting there. So I do, I, I will get back to all of those uh, questions that I, that I see. Uh, does that sound good? But right now, I just want to make sure that we're not just doing questions and then we get into some um, coursework. Cool. So in my time, it's 36 minutes past the hour. So we'll give ourselves, I don't know, five or six minutes. We'll come back uh, after that. So about, about uh, 45 past the hour. Sound good? Grab yourself a tea, a coffee, throw some food at a cat, a dog, a kid, a uh, quick bathroom break. And uh, when we come back, we'll be going into the Superconscious Creator course. I'm so grateful to have you all here and uh, see you in uh, five or so.